Hello everyone and welcome to CEC online lecture. The topic of analysis that we will be deliberating upon is global governance and international security. Now this topic is very pertinent for all learners from the field of political science, international relations, global diplomacy, international business amongst others. This topic is of huge significance to understand the challenges as well as the opportunities that are present for the governments, national governments, policy makers and international arena as well. When we try to understand global governance, let's decode what do we mean by governance. Governance implies the act to steer through, to manage, to look after things. Now today as we all know that the idea of government that is primarily to do, to look into things is being replaced by the idea of governance and in the realm of international relations also we hear about global governance which is primarily implying the framework that is to knit all the relations, all the actors, all the aspects involved in management of issues and problems. Now when we try to understand governance we have many perspectives namely we have Ome saying, saying that governance implies in the realm of when we see most participation coming out from global civil society or when we hear from the words of James Rosano which is talking about how today there are rise of new interdependent relations to manage global things. So therefore the idea of governance has its roots in the fact that today the state exists with non-state actors. Today alongside states we have the presence of international institutions like the IMF, the World Bank, World Trade Organization. We have powerful non-state actors like multinational corporations, transnational corporations, global civil society, non-governmental organization, international uh, other organizations. This shows that how the very idea of governance in present time and looking it from the uh, global perspective, it's a very complex and contested notion. Similarly, this also has implications for the domestic policy making that is governance in the domestic realms also is having contested contours. Then another significant aspect that we look at from the notion of global governance is that of shared challenges. Now these shared challenges demand certain collective understanding in order to work out ways for better future for all. Then another aspect involved in global governance namely that today when we analyze the challenges, the challenges are having threads that are having implications for all borders and these challenges demand global action and this global action can be streamlined, this global initiatives can be worked out only if there is cooperation and coordination from the state as well as from the various non-state actors. Now looking at the notion of governance from a historical perspective, we see that how at the end of the Cold War, there was also end of bipolarity in the world order. There was rise of a world center where there were multiple power centers. There was beginning of neoliberal driven globalization and amidst this the idea of military security existed with the need to secure our environment, to ensure better food and and prevent malnutrition, to work out avenues to root out poverty to ensure holistic development of all. So amidst all this governance also has to focus on the new challenges that emerged with the 
context of time. Let's take into account certain perspectives from the realm of international relations theory to you know, appreciate and understand the idea of global governance better. Now we all know that one of the uh, most important schools of thought in international relations is that of realism. Now for realism it is the power struggle, it is the competition which is at the core of any aspect to understand international relations, namely statism leading to self-help paving way for survival. Now in this aspect when we try to situate new challenges that are there, new avenues that are being discussed and debated for global governance, for the realist also then it is the state which is the main actor to take forward the governance debate forward. It is the power struggle, it is the competition which is a defining feature of international reality and any governance mechanism driven by the state has to be worked out meticulously to secure and give primacy to national interest of the state. The other perspective that is there when we try to understand global governance issues is that of institutionalists. Now herein we like to situate the work of neoliberal institutionalism, one of the most important ideas of complex interdependence put forward by Robert Kyohan and Joseph Nye that how today when we try to understand and decipher international relations we have to see that state exists with other non-state actors then there are multiple channels of communication. Further, today there is absence of hierarchy as to which issue can be called domestic and which issue can be termed as belonging to the global and international. So therefore in all this realm, global governance is definitely ushered as per the perspectives of power and integration given by Robert Kyohan and Joseph Nye bringing into focus the prevalence of norms, regimes, institutions, all of it go a long way to play an important role in order to get the world and the global community together to work out solutions to various issues. Another aspect that has been put forward while we try to understand global governance is that of the constructivist. Now learners, you must uh, read the work of Alexander Wedden, Rugi, that how these people are looking at towards the intersubjective dimensions that are involved in understanding any concept or in the debates that go on in nurturing any idea. All these uh, thinkers that we mentioned like Rugi, uh, Wedden, they talk about that how certain identities and norms, one has to look as to what are the forces that are leading to creation and construction of these identities and norms and how the state must not overlook the state must just not end up simplification of the construction of norms and identities. This is why the constructivist agenda, while you know bringing more inputs in our learning on the dimensions of global governance, they bring to us this very important aspect that we must focus, we must think, we must deliberate that how certain norms and values they get constructed, what are the forces that actually go into and the work of Alexander Wedden and Ruby are definitely important to enable us to understand the churnings that are there in the idea of global governance. Another important aspect on global governance has been put forward by the pluralists and some of the important works that one can read here today are there of Ome, are there of Susan Strange, Turner, all of them pointing towards that how today with the rise of global civil society, global social movements, global markets for trade and finance, today somewhere there is enhancement of the participatory levels by the various 
issues and individuals and states that are in the big churning of global issues. So therefore one has to look into from a different dimension that how today there is an idea of broadening of the agenda and today the things are existing alongside the status discourse and one cannot overlook so therefore amidst all these churnings and ideas we see that how today global governance has been debated now another perspective that comes forward on global governance is from the Marxist perspective. Now for the Marxist it is ultimately capitalist ex issues, the issues of domination and exploitation that are important for understanding any comprehension. And global governance is no different also in this regard because for the Marxist the ultimate focus would be that whether the agenda of the rich countries, rich organizations, rich vested interests, are they being promoted more over the interests and, or, and values of the people who sub do not own the means of production, namely the haves not, the poor. So whether state policies and uh, effects and impact of global governance, are they leading to making rich richer and poor poor? poorer so the focus of the marxist analysis would be on focusing on getting and bringing the class perspective bringing in the dimension of capitalist exploitation and domination now as we are looking at these contrasting perspectives on governance one also has to see that ultimately it is the idea of security the need to be safe the need to be secure the need to be happy and self-contained that is always there at the primary initiative for any governance the same applies in the realm of international relations it is international security which was primarily seen in a military term which was always at the core of analysis for working out various dimensions of international and global politics once again when we look at security the realists perceive security primarily in a military term an important analysis that could be brought in here is that of kenneth walls and kenneth walls puts forward that how today sovereignty is one similar aspect that is available to all the states and amidst all this we have differentiated capabilities and to work on the aspect of national interest the realist gives primacy to the military security the need for a nation to be strengthful for its army navy air force amongst others and this agenda largely dominated the discourse in world politics if we see in the times of cold war the world was divided into two power blocks the capitalists versus the communists there was a nato alliance versus a cito cento warsaw pact so all of it shows that how the idea of the need to be safe to be secure to feel the presence of no threats was primarily seen in a military sense but with time there has been a change in this notion of security and this has huge implications for global governance mechanisms for the perspectives that go in to define global governance and one must appreciate these changes in security one must comprehend the analysis of changes in security dimensions for a better analysis of the challenges as well as opportunities that lie for national governments and for world politics at large in the year 1994 a very significant concept via united nations human development report and the work of mehboobul haq is definitely one has to look into for this perspective was put forward and the notion of security was seen through a multi-dimensional perspective seven areas were identified in order to focus on the changing dynamics in order to bring into light certain areas that were ignored earlier and above all placing individual placing the human element with respect to a big notion of the state at the center of any analysis and thereby also bringing new inputs into 
policy making now when we understand human security each of its element definitely ask more each of its perspective definitely has new challenges as well as opportunities for the idea of global governance let's have a, a brief uh, discussion on various elements of human security one of the important element of human security is economic security now when an individual is suffering because of vagaries of market forces when an individual feels the impact of fluctuations of various kinds of imports and uh, forces that are there in the working of global markets can really an individual call himself or herself secure by the presence of huge gigantic military apparatus so therefore there was this new kind of thinking that was presented that how there is a need for safe and secure livelihoods how there is a need to put forward a united front to usher in development by having sustainable growths and removing poverty another aspect of human security is that of food even today world over there are news coming that many parts of the world there are people who are not able to get to square meals a day even uh, is respective of getting food there are issues of malnutrition which are prevalent various kinds of diseases that are associated with this cyclic process of food so therefore this brings into attention the issue of distribution the issue of production when it comes to ag agrarian aspects when it comes to other industrial manufacturing aspects another aspect of few foods uh, of uh, human security that one must look into account is that of environment today when we are seeing that individuals all over the globe are feeling that there is a threat of climate change global warming ozone depletion loss of biodiversity scarcity of resources and all these aspects they demand certain kind of united efforts and global governance mechanism via climate change treaties protocols to save the environment various kind of agreement to stop the uh, impact of hazardous elements on environment are working mechanisms so therefore this brings into focus at how over the period of time the agenda of security namely can an individual be really secure when one is under vagaries of weather when one is witnessing that how because of climate change there are impact on the both the human and animal population so therefore how the agenda of human security is not only broadening the inputs that are there in understanding of security but at the same time presenting new policy areas where today many governments are working at various global and regional summits to ensure better coordination and better inputs and outcomes for human civilization future another aspect of human security that one must look into is the idea of personal security even today at many places there are issues of law and order crisis and sometimes there is a need for the police apparatus for the law enforcement apparatus to come together to take more inputs to work out better intelligence mechanisms and to work out better enforcement mechanism to ensure that all the threats and all the aspects are catered better so therefore we see that how the agenda of uh, uh, international uh, security has been enlarged by the idea of human security today health security is very important the world is uh, just the world just witness the corona virus pandemic and amidst this pandemic the need that today there has to be a united effort to combat it today many measures of social distancing the aspects of lockdown will be only successful when the entire world polity gets together to regulate and manage health together even in the past world had witnessed pandemics like ebola h1n1 and all of it have brought into focus that not only there are big issues that one must look into when it comes to bio warfare but at the same time that how health and economy are complementary and supplementary to each other and nations must look into
another aspect that is presenting new challenges for global uh, governance by uh, somewhere revamping the notion of uh, security is that of community security. There is a need for groups and communities to feel secure and national governments have to work together in order to ensure better sustainability. And then when we look at the, the international security debate, of course today there is a need for strong law and order governance mechanism and this put forward that there is a need for stability in law and order mechanisms, thereby, thereby political security is also important dimension so therefore what we see that from economics to health to environment to community to our uh, political aspect to individual security all of it is having a bearing on the changes that are taking place in the global scope and these changes are related to the aspect that today security is becoming multi-dimensional and any debate on global governance must look into account that how today security is multi-dimensional today how the state has to exist as well as cooperate with various other stakeholders today power is moving towards certain porous realms today decision making is having more stakeholders and amidst all this nations of the world have to get together for joint meaningful coordination and cooperation for a sustainable future of human civilization this will also pave the way for a better safe secure world for everyone where lives as well as issues of individual that is better coordination between individual interests and the larger states national interest will exist most important that how today the idea of freedom from fear that is primarily saving from the violent conflicts today this has transformed towards freedom from want a much more holistic perspective towards policies and issues at hand so dear learners we hope you gained some significant inputs and insight while understanding the topic of global governance with respect to international security we hope you gained some significant remarks and insight for understanding global governance that is primarily from various point of view of various perspectives as well as the debates that are going on we hope that you all learned that how today diplomacy policy making international business and our everyday lives also how there is a somewhere joint link to connect all of them and we all need better coordination better cooperation for a sustained safe secure future of human civilization once again thank you very much for being a part of the lecture today